Again, the legendary Bobby Mackey joins us in just moments to talk about what's been going on this summer and the 40th anniversary of the bar, which just happened like a, a month ago. And uh, still to come, James Rapine and Jay Ratliff on this first nightcap of its second season on 700 WLW. Welcome back into the nightcap on 700 WLW. Joining us, local country music legend, entrepreneur, rack up tour, club owner, musician, hit music performer, the one, the only, Bobby Mackey. How are you doing, Bobby? Gary, I'm, I'm doing great. It's uh, great to be on with you again. Well, we had you on the first time last fall on Halloween, I guess, because of the history of Bobby Mackey's and the alleged hauntedness of the establishment uh, which you own and you, yeah. were, you were proud of it which uh, again for folks who don't know you don't believe in any of that hogwash at all do you no but it follows me everywhere i go <laughs> no doubt but see i mean october and halloween's a pretty good month for bobby mackey's usually isn't it yeah it's crazy uh you know it's, just, it's a crazy month but uh you know the Gee whiz, every, every weekend's crazy at the uh, America's Honky Tonk in Wilder. Well, I, I would imagine that not I'm not casting aspersions on any of your customers or guests, but I imagine there's some people who come in around Halloween that may be scarier than the, the, the ghosts that are alleged. Well, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> I spent some nights in some honky talks, Bobby. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've spent many nights in Well, I know you have. You own one. You don't have a yeah, whole lot of choice. People always ask me when I'm bartending, you own this place? I said, hell no, I'm not crazy. I wouldn't own a bar. Well, I am. I know. That's why it's great to have you on. You know, uh, we, we just celebrated 40 years. Yeah, I was going to uh, bring that up. Yeah. 40 yeah. years. Um, and I know that you've had some incredible, incredible nights at Bobby Mackey's, and every weekend's great. But you always point out the night that George Jones played. Yeah, that was boy, that was a memorable night. Now he uh, showed, he actually showed up, right? Oh, oh yeah. No yeah, show, yeah. Jones actually showed up at Bobby Mackey. Yeah, I wouldn't send him a deposit. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. Now was he was he not allowed to drink when he was performing for you? Well, well, he had a road manager that uh, that ordered all my help to to not serve him no drinks. Uh, that he would uh, filter all the drinks he had. I got you. Filter so, as in water down or make sure he didn't get any alcohol? No, he would get them for him. Uh -huh. He would be the, the middle person there, and, and he didn't want George getting any drinks he didn't know about. <laughs> well, that's probably a good move. <laughs> but uh, but I'll tell you what. See, George was my hero, you know. I, golly, when I was a teenager, yeah. I, I used to listen to George on the Grand Ole Opry and, and he'd be on the Porter Wagner show a, a whole lot the, sure. the TV, Porter Wagner TV show and uh, so when you know during the business of it all and, and booking George and uh, you know like a 10 day notice he had just gotten out of the hospital down in uh, Florence Alabama and uh, and he, he needed to work and I, I got the call and, and uh, I, I booked him in, and, and through the business of it all, and making sure it was advertised, and, you know, crossing off the T's, dotting all the I's, I, and it was it was all business. But the night he was actually introduced to my stage, I just froze in my tracks. It was it was just a thrill of a lifetime, and then all the business went away, and it was reality of my hero walking on my stage in Wilder, Kentucky. Yeah, that's amazing stuff. Did you ever get a chance to uh, meet or see Jerry Lee Lewis in concert? He just celebrated his 83rd birthday this past weekend. I opened the show for Jerry Lee up at uh, up in Columbus. Uh, the the what was it? The, uh, what was the name of that place? Ponderosa Park was it? I, I can't remember. It was on, but uh, I opened the show for him up there. And uh, gee, it's been a long time ago. But uh, yeah, Jerry Lee, uh, you know he's. What a legend he is. Well, yeah, and the fact that you opened the show, did you set the piano on fire before he came on stage? Uh, <laughs> no, but I look, for, I, I look for him to do it. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, Jerry Lee's just incredible. The fact that he's still around, considering his 
he hadn't exactly had an easy life by his own actions, you know. Yeah. This is yeah. a guy this is a guy who accidentally or on purpose when he was drunk shot a couple of band members. <laughs> yeah, I, I never I never could understand why he went down to uh, to the, the Elvis's gate down at the yeah. Graceland. Graceland went down there with, with a gun. A, with a pistol and shooting around. I never could understand why he did that. <laughs> Gary Lee's quite a character, and he's still with us. Uh, yeah. God well, Gary, I, I've, uh, you know, aside from celebrating 40 years in Wilder, Kentucky, I've, I've had a great summer, and uh, and I just celebrated a, a number one record. Of this. Yeah, and, I wanted uh, to talk about that. This is an old Bill Anderson tune. Bill, Bill originally recorded it? Uh, no, Bill Anderson wrote it, but Porter Wagner recorded it. And the, and, song, and the title of the song is? I Go Down Swinging. I heard you on Local 12 playing that. Yeah, and it it was number one on what list, Bobby? On the uh, uh, new new music new uh, new weekly new music weekly chart. New music weekly. And uh, you know how you know country music has changed quite a bit, and, uh, and there's there's a mainstream there's station for the new country music. There have been a lot of stations spring up uh, for the that's playing the more country side of traditional country. country. Of country music, exactly, and I kind of fell into that. And I, you know, I, I explained it by saying I, I stumbled around and, and, and got a number one record. And uh, but I got to tell you about the song. I used to listen to it on the Grand Ole Opry. I listened to Porter Wagner, and he'd sing the song. And and uh, I had to listen to, uh, like four weeks, four Saturday nights in a row to learn all of it. You know? <laughs> so, sure. It, well, like I'd learned it. I learned the chorus first, then I learned the verses. And when the Grand Ole Opry would go off, I'd grab my guitar. I was like 15 years old, and uh, I'd go out back. I uh, grew up on a on a farm farmhouse, sure. and I'd go out back of the house. And, uh, and the, sometimes it'd be a big old moon, and it would, that moon would be my spotlight. And uh, and I and I'd play and sing, you know, and I'd. I would uh, fantasize I was singing on the Grand Ole Opry. What but took was, you so long to record it? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, I was always trying to record things that radio might like, and uh, and but I'd gotten to the place where I'd gotten to the place where uh, uh, social media has been really good to me. I I, uh, I saw a lot of a lot of music on iTunes and everything. Yeah. And uh, and so. I just just decided I was going to record the, the stuff that I liked, and of course I've been writing a whole lot lately. But uh, uh, I decided I was going to record songs I liked. Well, I recorded that song, and and uh, and, and when uh, then I found out about a, a promotion company that was promoting to the stations that that are playing traditional more, country tra traditional country music exactly. So. The, they listened to my album and they liked that song right there. I'll go down swinging, and so we went with it and and released it. And they took it to number one. It was number one two weeks in a row. And I followed it up with the song. I, I wrote the song, uh, and I uh, actually I went. I, I started uh, thinking about you know like I like I said I was recording the songs that I liked at whether radio played or not. But when I got play on this. I kind of lead my writing toward radio, and it's kind of a, a different song for me. But I, I wrote the song. It's called uh, "Drinking My Coffee Black." Yeah. And and my wife said that when I sung it for her after I wrote it, she said that's the best song you've ever written. You better record that right away. So we did, and it's a follow up to "I'll Go Down Swinging," and it's number twenty nine on the chart this week. God love you. Congratulations for that success, Bobby. I mean. You, you've been doing this such a long time, and, and to have this kind of success now is just... Man. I never figured on it. I just never figured on it. And, but, but the music, to me, never gets old. The, the music part of it is it's the passion of my life, and, and I'm going to do it as long, as long as I can. Let me know. Bobby Mackey's open there on uh, Route 9 and Wilder. When? A Friday and Saturday night. Right. Every Friday and Saturday night, America's Honky Tonk. And, and my music, uh, uh, Drinking My Coffee Black, is on uh, YouTube. I want to check that out. Well, I, I got to ask you a favor. If, okay. If we can ever get this together, if I come out 
and it won't be on a Friday night because I'm up early Saturday morning doing my regular Saturday morning edition show. Yeah. If I can come out Saturday night sometime, and I'll let you know when, maybe you'll let me sit in with you and sing. Oh, uh, you betcha. I would be thrilled. <laughs> That'd be great. I, I, I love, since you're, one of your favorites is, is George Jones, I'd love to do He Stopped Loving Her Today with your Oh, family. you're on. All right. Hey, hey, you got a plan on the backup, too. Okay. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have one waiting in the wings, brother. <laughs> you're great, Jimmy. Bobby, yeah, thank you I so much. You. Bobby Thanks. Mackey on the nightcap on 700 WLW.